Hello and welcome to Little Workroom Crafts, Vlogmas number 13. It's Friday the 13th today. Whoa. Um, so, um, yeah, 13th already. That's unbelievable. Okay, so, and as you can see, I'm in the little workroom. <laughs> I'm so cosy and feel so cosy up here. Right, so I did say that I was going to do some little bits to show you how I actually frame my um, cross stitch, which I've got everything all out planned. But obviously, this is not a tutorial, this is Vlogmas. But I will, some of it will be photographs, and then I will come in and explain how I got there. But some of it I will show. But I do actually have a couple of people. Uh, they are American, uh, off, on Vlosh Tube. Um, I will. I don't know how to do links, so I'll just write them in the description down below. Who actually do tutorials? I am planning on doing tutorials next year for all this, and um, yeah. But at the moment, as I say, it's Vlogmas. You know, it's supposed to be little quick videos, not you know a big a big thing. But I'm going to show you as much as I can. Okay, so the uh, two ladies that um are very very clever one of them is a cross stitch designer you've heard me mention her loads before is uh, kathy hoberman she's hands-on designs i love her designs but she do little tutorials on how you know to um do finishes and the way she does her cushions are so clever absolutely clever the other one is varna uh, from the Twisted Stitcher. Now she actually is a professional finisher for cross stitch and her tutorials are amazing. Okay, you will find that some will use sticky board. Now I've got this sticky board for today. Um, I've never actually used this before, so this is gonna be fun. And, uh, but because normally I use the um, mount board which i go buy from my local independent stationery shop down in my little town and this is all i've got left from a massive big sheet that i brought and i just haven't had been able to go obviously i was at work yesterday so i couldn't go down and get a sheet so i'm going to do a bit of this and we're going to have a play with a bit of this as well so basically i was naughty as i said yesterday and i did get some fabric not that i need some <laughs> Um, and I also got some trims because I do like doing the trims and I've got some other bits in my box, my box of mini bits there. Uh, right. So the first thing I do with my cross stitches is, right, um, let's get up. Let's see if I can move you a bit and that way. Okay. Oh, yep. Okie dokie. Right. So I, after you've washed it. So all I do when I wash it, you don't put a fr like a fragrance like you do with you don't do like you do with your, your 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 walls and things like that. I just use a little bit of washing up liquid in tepid, and I mean very tepid um, water. Lay it in the, the a bowl or the sink and just let it lay flat. And then while that's just laying there, I get a, 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 an old newspaper and a towel, which I have a towel especially for the job for the cross stitch. And then I will, you know, rinse it around like this a bit. And then I take it out, put fresh water in without the washing up liquid and then give it a nice rinse to get rid of the bubbles. And then I go like that, but I don't go like that just to get a little bit of the water out. Lay it on um, the towel on the newspaper and pop it on the floor in the dining room underneath the radiator. And it, just for a couple of days. So it does it in its own time. And as you see, obviously, it's it's a little bit crinkly so what you do is i've got in here oh where is it this is it is see the state of my own cupboard right is let's move you here on the ironer board right okay let's see what i can do is it that one or is it that one um hold on bear with me because this is new no, it's got to be that one. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Right. So, so you don't flatten the stitches because there's one thing you do not want to do is flatten your stitches. Is you get a towel, you get your cross stitch, lay it front down. Okay. I use Best Press. There is some people that don't like this, but I use it for my quilting. It's amazing stuff. You'll see the difference in a minute that this Best Press um, actually does make. But you hold it up high. You don't want to saturate it in any way. And you just go like that. 
okay that's that done basically <laughs> that is that and then get your iron and just run it over just like that now look how flat that has gone that best press is absolutely amazing there's not a single wrinkle in that and it makes life a lot easier to um to do your framing basically so i know when i started doing the cross stitch many years ago all right let's get back a bit so you can see me <laughs> many years ago i used to do like everybody else you know rope it all around the back and pop it in a glass frame put them up on the wall and leave them there you know i've got my big one up behind me that you you've probably all noticed you know that was done long 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 time ago but these days it's you, you can really really be adventurous and I wish this stuff was invented <laughs> honestly then when we did do the the, the framing because it is you know you can see it's just got body now it lays flat amazing stuff absolutely amazing right so that's all we actually need the best press for but as I say it's good like obviously people quilters will know when you get your um uh, your fat quarters you know obviously shops have to store them in certain ways uh, you know to get more in for a variety and sometimes when they're left and they're folded you're going to get a crease pop some of that breast press on put an iron over it just like that it's brilliant i must admit this one because they do come in fragrances it does come as i will say i'm not sponsored by anybody for this um it comes so is it scent free there's another one but i like the linen fresh it just gives a little bit to it really you know but you can use it on your clothes you know create like if you've got linen you know because obviously linen as we all know is a bit of a to um iron um so yeah but well worth well worth it well well worth it i'm so glad i come across that so right then what i'm going to do next is i'm going to stop a bit and then i'll take photographs because i'm going to do the the back board okay because i want to put a piece in there because as you see i've glued all, all my framing bits in i've got my back on but i've got to take my back off and then i've got to put a piece in there i've measured it and i think it was seven and a half inches so i'm going to get a piece of the me um mount board cover it with fabric and already have that in then we're gonna start with this because i bought a piece of wadden behind it and so on so okay i'll be back soon okay i'm back right a bit of a change of plan because i want my frame my sheet in my frame to actually sit at the back here as oh, there as an actual box let's move you up a little bit there you go as a little box so it's going to be here um i've decided what i'm going to do is the actual back piece is i'm going to cover that with the background fabric i did get the best press out again look and as you can see give that a perfect press and right so how i actually do this is i've got my glue this is the glue i use the high tack i do have to get another one of these and all i do is i stand it in a little jar so that it's all constantly always at the the head there and what you do is basically no wadding on this i only put wadding behind my actual cross stitch piece is that you'll do like opposite sides first and then pop in the corners and then right I, we'll get that far and then i will be back just quickly popped on because what i always do as well is put a piece of glue across there okay and then just rub it up to the edge with your finger okay just like so that's why i always have an old hanky of glens or something like that and then pull that over a little bit taut obviously because you want it to be looking nice on the other side but not too stretched as i say this glue is absolutely brilliant hope it does a bit more there there we go well worth getting and there you go there's two sides done already so look how nice and neat that is on the front and then when it comes to the actual corners what you do is you pull it in a little bit not a lot gosh i sound like one of those people what was it? who used to say that someone on the television <laughs> in the olden days 
and then pull that little bit of corner in like that put a little bit of glue under there and then you're basically going to get a nice square corner similar to how we do on our quilting okay so that's basically the first part i'll be back soon okay right there's all four sides actually um all glued down all i'm going to do on the back of there i know people are not going to see the back but just for my benefit i'm just going to put a piece of felt glue a piece of felt on the back there okay but look that is how nice and tidy the board looks now a way of actually getting your corner to be honest with you um it's good they're going to be hidden anyway so actually i'll do that bit in a minute when you look on the bits that you've seen um but um yeah i'm actually pleased with that so i'll put that in the box uh frame fingers crossed it will go in okay now <laughs> after all this and i'll be back in a minute <laughs> wow i can't believe it look how nice that look and it's actually right in there so I've got my gap all the way around, which is what I was planning on. And then the plan is, I might even see, I might not even hang it. I might see if I can stand it. But the plan is, what have I done with them? Uh, oh, here they are, right in front of me, look. I'm going to use um, definitely the rust. Um, I think probably behind the sheep because he's got his little rusty colour there. And the cream, I think. I think, or I might just use the two actually and make it look real vintage, as which is originally what I wanted. Um, yeah, I think I will. I'll stick with that. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to turn off again in for a moment, get everything for prepared, and then I will show you how this is the scary part because now you've got to cut this. <laughs> I don't like doing this bit, but you know I've been doing it for a while now, so. Yeah, it gets easier. It does get easier. But yeah, I think I am going to stick with the two. Yeah. OK, right then. I'm sure I can find somewhere else. <laughs> Something else to do the, with the fabric. I'm sure I can. So yeah, OK then. I'll be back in a moment. OK, right. This comes the scary part. Now, the best way I've done it, and as I say, this is how that um, the Vona, Vona, Vona uh, from the Twisted Stitcher, she, this is actually how she does hers as well. So what you want to do is, as you can imagine, the old quilting rulers are amazing for this job, is you get your ruler to the edge of your actual stitch, uh, stitching, and you measure. So this along here is five and a quarter, and write every, all your measurements down okay by let's go down so it's five and a quarter and now we will go down to i will go down to six and one two three four five eights okay right so now i've got to decide because that's got to fit into my seven inch because it's well it's seven and a half inch but i don't want it right to the edge because i want a bit of that green to be seen but i've got to allow for uh obviously my turning okay oh dear this is always the scary part you have to excuse me because i am left-handed so what i will do is i'm going to put the ruler up against my stitching again and I think I'm going to come out uh, I'm going to come out one two three four five eighths that's what I'm going to do because I like a nice piece behind the back five okay so you actually use the row I'm lucky enough that I, I do actually use Ada I love using Ada so um I can count the holes to make sure that I actually do get, you know, my line right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the way around this five eighths and then I'll be back. And I do actually use my rotary cut to do it. OK, I will be back. OK, right. Right. First of all, I will explain this. So this is the first time I've used this sticky board. And to be honest with you, it is so thick um i haven't actually done the sticky part yet so i'll see how it here is it's not an easy product to cut i do like the mount board but everybody's different that's just my opinion okay let's just let's that better um yeah um also when i even if i cut my mount board what i do is i use my um quilting rulers to draw with a pencil and then i do cut with um a, like a, a, a craft knife and a metal ruler i actually <laughs> 
<laughs> give Glen Art attacks because being left handed <laughs> it looks a bit weird. Um, so yeah, uh, the piece of um, cross stitch has been cut, and I have uh, cut it to uh, just enough for it to go wrap over. Because you've got to remember, on top of your actual board, now I'm going to put a piece of wadding, okay, or batting. Um, I always use the 80-20, that's the one I like, because I use this in everything, my quilts and everything. So, as I say, I don't know what it's going to be like to stick onto this, but we'll have, give it a go. And then I will do the same technique like I did with the back of my um, uh, frame board, is I will put it on and then glue it around to the back of the sticky board, okay? Do sides first and then get it nice and square. Now, there is, what I normally do is, because um, obviously sometimes with the um, with your craft knife you can't get a perfect cut. You know it's it's hard enough cutting stuff as it is with them um, a, a craft knife on a board like this. So what I would do is I'd get some sandpaper and sand down any edges that are sticking out. You know just to get rid of all the nasty bits, and that seems to work fine. Okay then, right, let's give it a go, shall we? Let's put you down. Right, and see what this is like. Well, that doesn't feel sticky. Hold on. <laughs> wow, this has surprised me. Oh, even in English. Oh, All right. To be stuck to the back of the needle. Uh, yeah. Wow. Is there another piece I've got to take off? Let's have a look. Well, that definitely isn't sticky. Well, that was worth doing, wasn't it? Okay, right, I'll do the old-fashioned way, like the way I like. So, put some glue on, all the way around. Pop your wadding on and flatten it out. Well, that was really worth buying, wasn't it? I'm definitely going to go down to my local stationery and get this mount board because... The price was amazing and I have got a lot of cross stitch out of this. So, and then basically I just get me rotary cutter and cut round the outside. Okay. Get it nice and neat. Just like that. And now I have got a board with some wadding on. Okay, right, now what I will do is line all this up to my cross stitch and as I say, do exactly what I did with the um, the back bit and, you know, get it nice and, and square and so on. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, right, I'm back. Basically, I'm going to show, to explain to you what I've got, what I've done to, the, to get this stage because now the fun part um, happens where you can actually decorate the frame and so on which is what I love doing okay right then so um let's recap we covered the, the backboard then we covered the um the top board with wadding and then your cross stitch and then the board underneath that I don't put no wadding it's just fabric again okay so and I've used the um the tacky glue that I had for the whole of this stage so this is what it looks like now okay so as you can see at the top here where the hang comes out uh, is so for, my, for me to hang it up um what i'm gonna do is i have made a tiny little bow out of a piece of um burlap or you know uh, rustic twiny stuff and i'm going to glue that in there like so to cover it up now everything now that i'm going to do i actually do use my glue gun because i want it to be quick contact and um and to, to, to dry off quickly but like anything you do like this you actually do i place everything and then i go um you know and, and start with the glue gun okay so let's see what happens shall we right so i've got my bow i've got some leaves these leaves i did buy from a shop over here called the works it's a bookshop that does craft stuff as well okay and my other one i didn't put any red so i'm going to put a couple of reds on this one on there 
and then that there so you've got to make sure that you you can you don't do too much to take it away from your cross stitch that's the thing actually that don't look too bad that doesn't look too bad at all and then on the bottom because obviously it's got to stand they've got to come in a little bit more or unless i hang it i don't know yet i haven't quite decided so i could work up the sides like that and i've got a green there so i've got a yellow one here at the bottom and no that's too small to go on there oh actually that's have to face that way anyway oh i don't know actually hmm that actually ain't too bad so what you do is obviously like everything you get up and stand back and take a look oh i tell you what i did get yesterday which i wanted to add is i got some trims now this one i do like because it's got all the little leaves on it so let's have a see what i can do if i can do anything <laughs> um i don't i think i can to be honest i don't think it needs anything else i think that would be absolutely fine yeah i think i like that right so i'm going to get the old glue gun i've heated it up here and um, i'm going to glue these all on i'll be back in a mo okay i'm back finished so it doesn't take long this part it's the best part really the nerveful part is obviously cutting your cross stitch after all them hours of work um, I did change because you know we do um, my mind I didn't actually add this piece in because it just didn't go with what the look I wanted so the finished piece is like that I did put the button on the top which is the one I wanted and the little heart down here and these uh, leaves are more over the um, box where these are more sticking up so you know and I say I've got my little bow in there to hide up that little piece there I oh hang on a second sunny one minute rain in the next <laughs> and yeah i'm really pleased with this i really am and um i hope you've actually learned something as i say for christmas i know i have got some cross stitch things um which um one of the patterns uh, that i ordered for glenn to give me for christmas <laughs> um is another hands-on designs and it's actually um a little cross stitch um it's 12 of them so it's obviously one a month and it's all um for the what goes on in the month the seasons and so on so what i'm going to do with that one is my lovely friend at work katie her dad gary hi gary um he's um he, he gave me this lovely board bit of board uh of mdf and he routed all the outside for me which was really really kind of him i do appreciate that and i'm gonna you know do my bit on it i'm gonna paint it all up and do all that there the nice bit on it and my friend debs who who obviously from work in her uh, little cupboard that she's got her office she gave me this so after it's all done i'm gonna glue all that on like that and then i'm gonna do my me little months and then i'm gonna try and find a stand where i can stand this up and then I'm going to put um, magnets on, um, hang on, washers on here and magnets on the back of the little cross stitches. As I say, I'm going to mount them all the way. I've just done this, all different fabrics to go with, with the different cross stitches and so on. And then every month I'm going to change them over. So um, when I've got more, you know, when, when it isn't like a quick vlogmas, um, when, I, when I actually get my Christmas present, and i get it all started i will definitely um be doing it with with you guys and um showing you uh all the progress and how it goes about but please if you've got any questions you know leave them leave a question or a message down below and i will help you the best i can but it's so much fun doing it this way and as a crafter and crafters as you know it's good fun to go and collect all the trims even though i got these i never used them but, you know, for the little ones that I've just spoke about that I'll be getting for Christmas, they could quite easily get it come in handy and ribbons and stuff. I just collect them as I go along. And, yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed this. I've been really enjoyed doing it. I hope it isn't going to be too long. I really don't. But I'm just going to quickly show you. This was a big piece that I did. I, I did show it on my um, um, uh, podcast, but this piece fell off. So I have glued it on with my glue gun. <laughs> 
and uh, this will be going up where my little Santa is downstairs hopefully so uh, but I'm really pleased with it and you know it, it doesn't really have to cost a lot go to the pound shops and places like that and find and charity shops and all you need is a piece of wood and it's marvellous what you can do with it absolutely marvellous so I'm going to say goodbye to now I know it's only five past eleven in the morning but this is going to be a long one and um, I really hope that you've enjoyed the journey with me thank you very much have a good day take care bye bye